Across the vast black canvas of space, with billions of planets circling distant stars, the question of whether we are alone has become both a scientific pursuit and a philosophical obsession. We've discovered thousands of exoplanets, some strikingly similar to Earth in size, composition, and orbit. With each new world, the idea of alien life feels less like fantasy and more like a puzzle waiting to be solved. Yet not a single confirmed signal or biological trace has reached us from the stars. Despite the overwhelming numbers, the universe remains hauntingly silent. In this debate, we'll examine both possibilities, that the cosmos may be teeming with hidden life, or that Earth is the lone spark in an infinite dark. In a galaxy with over 100 billion planets, the idea that Earth is the only one to produce life borders on cosmic narcissism. It's like standing on a single grain of sand and declaring the entire beach is empty. Even if just 1% of those planets orbit in their star's habitable zone, that's over a billion potential Earths. And to prove life exists beyond our world, we only need one. NASA's Kepler and TESS missions have confirmed thousands of planets beyond our solar system. Many of them orbit in zones where liquid water, a basic ingredient for life, could exist. Water vapor, methane, and organic compounds have already been detected in exoplanet atmospheres. These chemical signatures are the fingerprints of possible biology in action. Life on Earth began rapidly once the chaos of early formation settled. That suggests biology might emerge wherever environmental stability and chemistry align. And those right conditions may be far more flexible than we once believed. Life may not require an Earth clone, just a spark in the chemistry to sustain it. Extremophiles on Earth survive radiation, acid pools, freezing ice, and deep ocean pressure. Life adapts brilliantly, it doesn't wait for ideal conditions to show up. If microbes can thrive without sunlight near deep sea volcanic vents, alien oceans sealed beneath ice might harbor similar organisms. Our expectations of habitability may be far too narrow. Moons like Europa and Enceladus in our own solar system contain vast subsurface oceans beneath their frozen crusts. They may represent the most Earth-like environments beyond Earth, and they aren't even planets. Even Mars, long thought lifeless, shows seasonal methane bursts and deep underground water reserves. If microbial life exists anywhere, it could be right next door. The James Webb Space Telescope is now capable of analyzing the chemical compositions of alien atmospheres. For the first time, we're moving from speculation to direct observation. Alien life might not resemble anything on Earth, it could be based on ammonia, sulfur, or even silicon. Just because something isn't familiar doesn't mean it's not alive. To assume life must look like us is a failure of imagination. The universe likely hosts forms of biology that operate on principles we've yet to understand. The Drake equation, while theoretical, consistently yields high numbers for potential life-bearing worlds when using cautious estimates. It's not definitive proof, but it's far from wishful thinking. SETI's ongoing silence doesn't prove a lifeless cosmos. Civilizations may be silent by design, or communicating in ways we don't yet comprehend. Some signals, like the WOW signal, remain unexplained, despite decades of scrutiny. Even unconfirmed anomalies keep the door to discovery wide open. Not all intelligent life would build skyscrapers or launch satellites. Some might develop along entirely different lines, dense forests, bio-networks, or oceanic intelligences. Life may start easily but rarely evolve into intelligence. We might find ecosystems, not empires. Even if civilizations are short-lived, their biological roots may persist or leave lasting marks. Galaxies could be littered with traces of lives now extinct. More exoplanets are discovered every year with magnetic fields, atmospheres, and the ingredients for life. Earth may still be rare, but it no longer appears to be alone. Evolution on Earth followed winding, unpredictable paths shaped by chaos and chance. There's no reason to think life elsewhere wouldn't do the same. Just as humanity once believed Earth was the center of the universe, we may now be making the same mistake about life. History tends to humble us when we assume we're special. We are in the infancy of exoplanetary exploration, and our tools are just beginning to mature. The silence we hear today may be broken by the signals we'll detect tomorrow. Science isn't about clinging to the known, it's about expanding the boundaries of the possible. And right now, the sky is full of open questions. If life appeared here, on one small rock orbiting an average star, then it can happen again elsewhere. Life is not Earth's private miracle, it may be the universe's quiet habit. argument against life on exoplanets. For all our hope, all our telescopes, and all our missions, we have yet to uncover even the faintest confirmed sign of life beyond Earth. Not a microbe, 
Not a signal, nothing but silence. The so-called habitable zone isn't a promise of habitability. Venus sits in hours, and it's a choking hellscape of acid and fire. Yes, we've detected water vapor and organic molecules, but those exist on comets and in lifeless gas clouds too. Chemistry alone doesn't equal biology. Earth's biosphere required billions of years of stability to support even basic multicellular life. A tiny disturbance, a flare, a collision, a wobble, could have derailed it all. Earth's livability depends on rare features, a protected magnetosphere, a large moon, tectonic recycling, and a Jupiter-like guardian. Remove any one of these, and we might not be here. SETI has spent decades scanning the skies and found nothing definitive. If intelligent life were common, we should have heard from it by now. Even assuming civilizations are quiet, what about their artifacts? No signs of megastructures, probes, or techno-signatures have ever surfaced. Closer to home, Mars remains barren despite being our most visited planet. The more we explore it, the less hopeful it seems. Europa and Enceladus may contain oceans, but these are locked beneath thick ice. Without light or surface interaction, complex evolution may be impossible. Extremophiles on Earth are resilient, but they started in favorable conditions and adapted. They don't prove life can begin in hostile environments, they prove it can endure after starting elsewhere. We underestimate how fragile the conditions for life truly are. A perfect mix of pressure, temperature, radiation, and chemistry is no simple accident. Theories about ammonia or methane-based life sound imaginative, but none of them have produced actual data. Speculation is not a substitute for discovery. Every time we think we've found a biosignature, science eventually offers a non-biological explanation. False alarms are the rule, not the exception. Many exoplanets orbit red dwarfs, which frequently release powerful flares. Those radiation bursts could strip atmospheres and sterilize surfaces in seconds. On Earth complex life took nearly 4 billion years to emerge. If that timescale is typical, life may not have had enough time elsewhere. Even if microbial life is common, intelligent life might be astronomically rare. Earth may be the exception, not the pattern. We often imagine the galaxy as teeming with civilizations, but what if intelligence is a failed experiment? A trait that leads to self-destruction more often than success? The Fermi paradox still holds power, if the universe is full of life, where is everyone? The silence is not just puzzling, it's defining. Civilizations leave traces, signals, pollution, structures. Yet the stars remain pristine and untouched. Even if alien microbes exist, they may lie so deep, so remote, or so different that we'll never detect them. In practical terms, that's indistinguishable from absence. The further we look, the more we realize how rare Earth might be. Special doesn't mean magical, but it might mean one of a kind. Scientists rely on evidence, not hope. And so far, hope has outpaced proof by light years. Just because we want the stars to be alive doesn't make it true. Longing is not a method of detection. Until we find that first alien cell or artifact, Earth remains the only known cradle of life. It's not a theory, it's a fact. Caution isn't pessimism, it's discipline. In a cosmos this vast and quiet, the burden of proof remains unmet. The debate over life on exoplanets is not just a matter of science, it's a mirror of how we see ourselves in the universe. It stretches from hard data to deep philosophy, from telescopes to timeless wonder. One side sees numbers, patterns, and chemistry as signals of a living galaxy. The other sees silence, fragility, and chance as evidence of profound solitude. We've catalogued thousands of planets, found familiar elements, and observed intriguing atmospheres. But not a single breath, pulse, or whisper of life has confirmed our hopes. Optimists lean on probability, saying life is the rule, not the exception. Skeptics reply with precision, until something lives, it's all just maybes. The truth may lie between the extremes, life may be out there, but far rarer or more alien than we expect. Or perhaps we are the pioneers in a universe still waking up. The search continues not because we are certain, but because the question is too meaningful to ignore. In asking it, we define both our curiosity and our caution. Whether we one day hear a signal, find a fossil, or discover nothing at all, the pursuit shapes us. It reminds us that Earth, known and fragile, is still the most extraordinary discovery we've made. So we listen, we wonder, and we look up, not because we're alone, but because we still don't know. And in that mystery, the cosmos stays both silent and full of promise.